So we finished up with our abiotic and biotic, and we, you know that the abiotic was the non-living things, and biotic are the living things, and they are going to have cells. So a cell is basically a membrane-covered structure. So if you think of a boiled egg and that little... A membrane that's right next to the shell, that's the membrane that holds all the insides of the, the gooey stuff inside your raw egg. Um, or if you're boiled eggs, either way, you're, you've got the membrane covering those structures, and that's going to be in a cell. And most cells are so teeny tiny that you can't see them with your regular eye. And the first scientist we're going to learn about is Robert Hooke, and he actually created the first microscope in 1665. And when he was doing that, he, I believe that he was in his workshop when he was building his microscope, and he wanted to test it out and say, hey, what, what, what's going on? What, what, is, what did I do? And I think he was drinking wine because he happened to pick up a piece of cork, and that was the very first thing that was looked at underneath the microscope. And when he looked at the cork, he saw little tiny boxes and he called them cells because where he's from, Latin means tiny rooms, which is cells. So he didn't see the same thing when he looked at animals, so he thought that animals weren't made of cells. So when we think of Robert Hooke, Ms. Harvey, what do we do? We say, argh, he was a dirty pirate that had to go to a jail cell. So when you think of cell, you should think of Robert Hooke, and Excellent. he's in a tiny room, cell. And then a few years later, Anton von Leeuwenhoek oh. came around and made a better microscope. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he, I think he was baking bread because he happened to see even smaller things than what Robert Hooke saw, and he saw something we called microorganisms. And that the first thing he actually looked at was bacteria and it was yeast. So I think he was baking bread. And he called them animacules because they looked like little tiny animals because they were moving around. So when we remember Anton von Leeuwenhoek, we give it a little twist to help us remember the bacteria like yeast. So when we say Leeuwenhoek, we go Anton von Leeuwenhoek. <laughs> Ms. Harvey, how do you do it? Leeuwenhoek. <laughs> nice. Okay. And then what happened, Ms. McDonald? Well, it was 200 years later. No one had invented another microscope or done anything. And then you had these three German scientists who were pretty much competing, I guess, that they were, they were discovering more about it. And so think about that. 200 years later, and they realized that all living things are made of cells. And so these three German scientists actually developed what's known as the cell theory. Okay, so we have Matthias Schleiden, and he studied plants and concluded that all plant parts are made of cells. So if you see a tree or a bush or your grass or a pretty flower, those are all made up of cells. So how we remember him is we think of us being on a piece of cardboard going down a very grassy hill. So we say Schleiden down a grassy hill. And on that grassy hill, we see bushes and trees and all kinds of beautiful flowers all of the plants that are in fact made of cells. And then we are going to talk about Theodore Schwann and his name makes it very easy to remember that he studied animals and concluded that all animal tissues are made of cells. So every single animal that you see from the smallest little frog to a big giraffe, they are made of cells. Their bodies contain cells. So Schwann, we remember, is a bird, is an animal made of cells. And our last one is Rudolf Virchow. He was a doctor that discovered cells can only form from other cells. So they come from pre-existing cells. So if we look at this picture here, we see that there has to be a dad and a mom. Those are the pre-existing cells. They come together to form and create a new life. So we have Rudy's dad and Rudy's mom, and they came together and made Rudy just like you were created from your dad and your mom, pre-existing cells. So when you look at these scientists, you have Hook in the jail cell. Going down, you have Leeuwenhoek, showing that there's good bacteria and bad bacteria. Then you've got Schleiden, Schleiden down the hill. The next column, you see Swan with his animals and his swans, and you see Rudolf or Chow. We're going to be talking about Linnaeus uh, later on, but that's just, for future reference, we're just gonna be studying these five for right now. 
So we want you to show your talent on Padlet. So how do you remember these scientists? So do you want to create your own way of how you remember it, one of the scientists? You could even go back and do it like um, where we are with uh, Landon Harvey. He did this awesome drawing of how he remembers the different scientists. So however you want to do it, you're gonna be showing your talent on Padlet because we know you can do it. Yep. Yes, you can. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Yay. Escape. Help me. <laughs> it's not done. Stop it. I will pause. Are we pausing? Pause. Why am I not stopping my. Okay. <laughs> Golly, I cannot get this to stop. It will not stop recording. Okay. <laughs> Golly. Jimmy Christmas. Are you serious? Okay. Do you do control S?